thank you for joining me. So I wanted to share some candid thoughts about my um, favourite sport, boxing. Now, I say favourite sport, perhaps it's more accurate to say the sport that I'm, that I know best, that I've followed for years, that I have um, spent hours thinking about, researching, looking into. Um, I'm particularly interested in the anthropology side of it, boxing history, you know, great fighters, great fights of the past. Um, but I, I do follow the sport today. And contrary to critical opinion, I don't believe that the the standards of boxing have declined. I think every generation has great fighters. And I think it's unfair to, um, you know, judge fighters based on something that's beyond their control, i.e. boxing politics. Most of the time it's beyond their control, even if they are great fighters. So it's unfair to say, oh, this this fighter doesn't match up to this fighter of the past because there's so many different governing bodies. That isn't the fault of the fighter. So I don't agree that the standards of boxing have declined. It could, argue, it could be argued it's got better, actually, because there's a lot more focus now on um, the whole training resume, nutrition, all that sort of thing. Um, but anyway, that's not what I want to talk about. Um, I want to talk about my love-hate relationship with the sport. That's really the best way to describe it because clearly there's something about it that I find very appealing. Otherwise, I wouldn't have followed it for years. I wouldn't have spent a lot of money on boxing magazines, boxing DVDs, you know, watch countless fights. Um, I had a charity fight myself four years ago. And I still, um, although it's getting more distant now because I'm in my early 30s, but I still nurture the idea that I might do something in the ring. You know, I'm never going to be a world champion, but I do like the idea that I still can maybe do something in the ring. I don't know. But I want to talk very candidly about aspects of the sport I really don't like. And I know I've made videos like this before, but... I think it's a point worth reiterating. A while back, I was talking to a fellow teacher, um, a lady, um, and we we're just talking about sports. And uh, in China, here in China, basketball is a huge sport. Boxing, not so much. There's a little bit of um, a groundwork there with So Ming, who is uh, actually from this province, from Guizhou province. Um, but boxing has never really taken off in China in the same way as it has in to name another Asian country, the Philippines. Um, whether it will or not in the future, I don't know. Certainly there's a huge market here. Um, I mean, generally the, the public understanding of boxing in China isn't very high because their idea is, um, you know, boxing equals heavyweights. They don't even necessarily understand the idea of weight divisions. And I'm not saying that in a disparaging way. It's just that the, the sport just isn't that big here. Anyway, um... I was talking to this lady just about sports in general and uh, she asked me what my favourite sport was so I told her and her her view was the reaction that a lot of people have who don't follow the sport, that it's violent, that it's aggressive and um, we were just having a conversation about this and I was trying to explain to her that that is one side of it but there's another side which is about discipline, about control, it's controlled aggression and um I certainly wasn't trying to convert her to, you know, liking the sport, but I guess um, I was being a little defensive just about that aspect. But she did make one point that people can end up disabled, and that's a point that is absolutely true. Now, to be clear, this wasn't an argument we had. It was just a very civil, interesting conversation. And her point of view um, did get me thinking because it's irrefutable. Boxing is a sport that is very hard to vindicate to non-boxing fans because what they see is two guys and women just just beating each other repeatedly on the head because fundamentally that's what boxing is. You know, we can say there's a control aspect, there's a thinking aspect, and there is. But ultimately, the goal is to hit people on the head. And there's no way around that. And let's face it, fans want a big knockout. Personally, I appreciate a fight where, you know, it's a grueling match. Both guys give their all. 
and they're both standing. I don't necessarily like knockout fights the best because sometimes I think you get more action from just um, two guys going at it and both standing. And from a human point of view, you know, my first instinct when there's a big knockout is not necessarily, whoa, what a knockout. It's, I hope the guy's okay. Most fighters are not psychopaths. They don't enjoy hurting people. So most fighters will maybe celebrate for a little while, but if their opponent's still on the canvas, I I suggest the majority of fighters will go to check if he's all right. So it's tempting to for non-boxing fans to look at the sport and think it's brutal. It's um, savage. It's inhumane, but... There's a lot of ways to look at it. I mean, um, guys do this of their own accord. It's true that in many parts of the world, it's a way for young men to get out of poverty. And you could argue that's not a great choice. Um, certainly, uh, in many cases in the UK and in Britain, it's either that or a life of crime. Um, but I don't want to overuse cliches here. But I, I watched a little bit of a clip of um, Nigel Benn, Gerald McClellan, well-known case in the sport, 1995, London. Uh, it was widely considered a great fight in terms of the fight itself. But of course, it had tragic, uh, had a tragic outcome. Um, McClellan went into a coma uh, and he was left with lifelong um, severe disabilities. Um you know, his memory is bad. He's, as I understand, partially blind. Now, people sometimes say he wasn't the nicest person in the world. Um, frankly, he was a bit of a thug in the day. But you'd have to be pretty cold to still not feel some compassion, even for someone who wasn't the most savoury of characters. When you look at Gerald McClellan, it's a very, very sad thing to see the state that he's in. Um, but what was hard for me to watch was Nigel Benn visited him, took a huge amount of courage, and um, he was there with one of Gerald McClellan's sisters who have dedicated their lives to looking after him, but he was holding McClellan's hand, and, you know, they were reminiscing. McClellan's memory, like I say, isn't great, so he had to keep, his sister had to keep kind of reminding him of what the subject was, and, yeah, you fought in London 12 years ago. And there was one point he said, is this a man giving me a mean look or a sad look? He barely even knew who Ben was. And at that point, Ben just broke down. He couldn't take it anymore. He had to kind of get away from the camera. And that's understandable because this was a very personal thing. And, you know, he's probably thinking, I, I'm the guy who caused this, basically. And he was. And yet, it's like soldiers going into a war, you know. Soldiers kill people. But we don't generally see soldiers as murderers because it's it's part of the ideology of defending one's country. Now, a boxer goes into the ring facing another man and it's equal in the sense that, you know, he's facing another man. He's not fighting a woman. He's not fighting a child. He's facing another man. And both guys make that decision to do it. And in most fights, one guy is better than the other. In this case... You had two very hard punchers in Nigel Benn, who's generally considered Britain's hardest puncher, or one of them, and Gerald McClellan, who was also a very um, dominant fighter. So it was inevitably going to be a very tough fight. Um, that was now 23 years ago. Gerald McClellan's, you know, lived in that condition ever since. And Nigel Benn, no doubt, has had demons from that experience. This is by no means the only example, there's many others, but this is one of the best known examples. Going back to the 60s, there was Emil Griffith and Benny K. Parrott, which resulted in death. Um, there's very few other sports that are comparable in terms of this sort of um, consequence when it goes wrong. Now, American football, you can have head injuries. Most sports, certainly physical sports, have some degree of the danger involved. But I suppose the difference is that with ball sports, the idea is, you know, you're trying to get a ball into the hoop or into the... I don't follow ball sports, I don't know on the road. But with a combat sport like boxing, the intent is there. In the end of the day, it's a fight. And there can be all the gentlemanly stuff... Um, 
from great guys like the Klitschko brothers, Manny Pacquiao, who are a real credit to the sport. But in the end of the day, it is about winning the fight by outpointing your opponent, by hurting your opponent. And it may not be personal, but that is the intent. Um, and yet most boxers will say they would never want to be in that situation where they leave their opponent in that sort of state. This is why trash talking needs to be a little bit, we need to be a bit wary of it. It can hype up a fight, but when you get to the point where promoters and the press almost goad fighters to hate each other, that's something that we need to be very wary of. Um, but there's things that depress me about the sport. I mean, certainly things like this. It's very hard if you're a true boxing fan to look at something like this and not feel depressed. And, you know, um, Gerald McClellan's a famous example because he was a very capable fighter. But there's many other guys who are not famous who end up disabled. Now, it's important to put things in context. The vast majority of fights don't end up that way. And the vast majority of boxers don't end up like Gerald McClellan. So it is important to put things into context. Because I think if it was always a case where it ended up like that, the sport would be banned without question. But there's a lot of aspects involved. There's the um, sovereign choice issue, i.e. in the end of the day in free societies, people choose to take risks. Um, it's challenging oneself. There are a lot of points about boxing. The non-boxing fans, I would ask them to consider, just consider. Um, I think that what bugs me most of all is the corruption in the sport. The corruption and the um, attitude of fans, some fans. Corruption, well, you could say it's in any sport, but... When I hear of guys who have been, you know, found using PEDs um, and then there's minimal consequences when they're still ranked and so on, that raises question marks to me. When you see decisions made in the favour of a fighter because it's his home ground and the other fighter has to, you know, get a knockout, it's the only way he can win, things like that I'm very dubious of. I believe that um, certainly... For title level, there must be a neutral point of view in terms of neutral referee, neutral judges. Most of the time there is, but not always. Um, I don't think boxing is as corrupt as it was probably in the 50s and 60s. So probably some improvements have been made. But there's money involved. And wherever there's money involved, there is corruption. You know, you get it in politics, it's the same in boxing. But... Fans can be so fickle and it really, really pisses me off. You know, when I see fans on one hand responding to something like the Gerald McClellan case and saying, oh, how tragic it is and uh, the referee should be jailed and it's terrible. I'm not saying that they're not sincere, but how many times do we see fans casually dismiss fighters as bums, as cards, as tomato cans? That really, really irks me off. Um, now, I, I get it. If someone pays money, you want to see a good fight. I would. But no boxing ticket, no matter how much it costs, is worth a man's life. So, you know, when people criticise Floyd Mayweather, for example, for running, it's, a, it's total nonsense. And I take issue with fellow Pacquiao fans in that regard. You know, they call Mayweather a runner and a chicken. Shame on them. Aside from being disrespectful to a great fighter, it's also ignorant because boxing is not about just letting yourself get hit. It's about defend yourself at all times. And people have a lack of understanding or lack of respect for that defensive style. And I don't agree that Mayweather's a boring fighter. I think he is a very clever fighter. There's a reason why BoxRec ranks him the best fighter of all time. Of all time even above Sugar Ray Robinson. Um, and I think there's a very good argument to me but be made that he is. I mean, 50 and 0, the, the guy is a complete um, master. Um, and yet he has that defensive style. People say it's running. 
Well, no one who steps into a ring to face another man in front of thousands of people is a card. That's just nonsensical. So the people who say that, they lack any sort of empathy whatsoever for what fighters go through. Now, you could argue Mayweather gets huge amounts of money, so yeah, um, he should you know, put on a show, and I think he does, but the fickleness of boxing fans is one thing I've always disliked in the sport, and I find that very hard to vindicate. You get it on some degree with to some degree in other sports, but with boxing, you know, when fans have that attitude, and yet, I don't care if a fighter is amateur or professional, every time a guy enters the ring, they're taking a risk. And I don't want to sound like I'm preaching, but it's the truth. So when fans are that disrespectful, it just pisses me off. Um, you know, it's almost like a Roman Colosseum, you know, when the emperor would put his thumbs down or something like that. That side is almost more brutal than the fight itself. It's very hard to vindicate that mentality. Now, I'm not saying it's all fans. Um, probably it's a vocal minority, but I think we, the sport needs to hold them a bit more accountable and stop treating fans like children. Fans are responsible for their own actions. And just as a side note, I think fans who you know, get involved in riots or whatever, I think they, that the sport should give them a lengthy ban, just like football has done. Um, boxing will always, always have that combative environment. It's not tennis, right? But there has to be a fundamental respect from the fans to the fighters. And it works both ways. You know, fighters have to conduct themselves in a good way, which is not always the case. Um, you know, and there's fighters I don't like. I'm not talking here about whether you like a fighter or not. That's a different thing. I'm talking about respecting what they do. There's fighters I dislike. I don't like their personality. I think they're arrogant, loud, and I don't think they're particularly um, good for the sport. But I fundamentally respect every man who enters the ring. And um, I struggle with this sometimes. It's an up and down thing with boxing because part of it I find very compelling. I'm fascinated by it. And part of me wants to do it. You know, all these things haven't put me off enough to totally phase me out from still that idea I want to try. But the mentality, you know, if I ever do get into the ring for real, I want to conduct myself in such a way that I can bring something positive to the sport, not just, you know, put my heart and soul into my skills, developing myself and so on, but... I look up to guys like the Klitschko's, Manny Pacquiao and others because there's something very, very honourable about a man who is in such a tough, violent sport and yet can conduct himself in such a decent manner. That to me is, that's, you know, the definition of a man. Someone like Vladimir Klitschko, it's just, I have huge respect for them and I don't idolise anyone, but I have huge respect for them. Okay, I'll leave it there. Let me know your thoughts.